What's up, everybody? I'm Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with episode number 28 of No Labels Necessary Podcast. Catch us on YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, wherever you stream your podcast. And we're back with content, culture, and music business discussions, as always. And as you know, every single episode, we like to start off with a little bit of advice. Today, we got some advice from one of the biggest content creators in the world, arguably the biggest content creators in the world. So you might want to listen to him when it comes to content advice. Mr. Beast, check out this clip and I think it's going to give you a great perspective. A lot of people get analysis paralysis and they'll just sit there and they'll plan their first video for three months. And yeah. any of you listening, especially if you have zero videos on your channel, your first video is not going to give views, period. It's not. Your first 10 are not going to give views. I can very confidently say that. So stop sitting there and thinking for months yeah. and months on end and just get to work and start uploading. All you need to do, this, this applies to people who have not uploaded videos, but have dreams of being a YouTuber, is make a hundred videos and improve something every time. Do that. And then on your hundred and first video, we'll start talking like maybe you can get some views, but you know, your first hundred are going to stop. Just make a hundred videos, improve something each time. And then talk to me on your 101st video. Wise words. Wise words. <laughs> There's a lot of things that I got in mind, but I want to know what you think first. Yeah, I mean, I agree with it, man. I think, you know, uh, analysis paralysis is a real thing. I feel like artists always expect everything to go amazing out the gate. And the reality of it is it, that more than likely isn't going to be right. Like, you're not even going to get close to that. So... It, the content game specifically, I look at it as a, a marathon of like attrition. You know what I'm saying? Like who can stay in it long enough to yeah. learn the skills that kind of make them better? You know, who can stay in it long enough to learn how to be entertaining? And the reality of it is that that's probably going to take you a couple hundred videos, at least a couple of tens of videos, you know, yeah. but in reality, probably a couple of hundreds of videos to even get decent at it. Mm. You know, and I feel like as discouraging as that might sound, it's also kind of liberating, man. You know, that means there's no pressure on your first handful of videos. Even like nobody's looking at your first couple of videos and like, oh, this shit is shitty. That's crazy. We're like, no, bro, we get it. You know, you just started posting yesterday. Uh, so there's this stat from Scale Fluence saying it took an average. You know what? I'll say this, say it this way. For the top 50 YouTubers. Okay. How long do you think it took them? to get their first video that did millions. That did millions? Mm -hmm. mm. Like in time or like amount of videos? In time. In time? Probably like three years. Three years? Yeah. So most of the top 50 YouTubers, it took them four years and seven months on average to get their first video that did millions. Damn, that's crazy. That's crazy. It yeah. takes time. Yeah, that kind of lines up with our whole like six to seven year you know, artist thing. Man. It's like right in the same bucket, you know. Right, yeah. right. Is that development and Mr. Beast? I like what he said, not just because of the idea of like make a hundred videos, but basically, I like the fact that it's actually straightforward. And he tell you something tells you something that's actually useful because a lot of people might just hear, oh, yeah, it's going to take you a long time or just create a lot of videos and don't look at your views. That sounds fluffy at this point. But if you listen to him, he said, create 100 videos and improve something every single time. Yep. And then we'll talk about your views. Yep. Right. If y'all who have been listening to the podcast, <laughs> right, y'all know at the very least when we came with this thing. The audio wasn't popping, yeah. right? Things weren't working. We kept telling y'all, give us some time. Give us some time from the very beginning. And, of course, we had already created content yeah, before. We, we on at least 4,001 or something. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. yeah we, we had already done well. But it was a new thing that we were, com um, you know, coming into. And we approached it just the same. Yeah. Right? So, we used this. Right? We, we dropped Content, the audio wasn't right. Then we had to figure out videos, take feedback. But there's some feedback we still haven't got a chance to apply yet. But there are so many things that we're going to improve. And we aren't at 100 videos yet for this podcast, right? We're at what? Well, 28. 28 yeah, yeah, 28. Yeah, 28. Right? But every little thing, you know, hopefully we're making it better and better. So that pr advice of just improve, 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 and don't focus too much, where we're in a position that we already have people who are watching us from one reason or another. Yeah. So we didn't start with zero where we like we got zero views. It would be like, yo, bro, all right, sounds crazy. <laughs> right. But with that same idea, 
when you already have a following, you have to still be willing to go through that process in front of people yeah. like what we did and what we're still doing and then not be overwhelmed by the feedback. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like, yeah, OK, bro. I know you want to see us do this, but we're not going to do this. Yeah, I know you want to see us to do this. And some things we are still going to do, some things we aren't going to do. But our process because um, I don't even want to say what we're not doing. Like for people who got, gave that feedback, like, nah, we ain't doing that right now or we're not going to do it at all. Just know that even if we are going to do some things, if we do it out of order, when we're trying to figure out what's working and what's not, then it's going to confuse us and we won't know if it if our podcast did well because of this or if it did bad because of that. Yeah. All right. Because we just tried to do everything at one time. We knew improving the audio is going to be one of the best things that we yeah. could do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Making sure we get, are consistent and understanding how many topics we want to talk about, how long we want to go um, and playing around with that type of chemistry and getting used to flipping the, the thing around in, in our current format, all that stuff was just going to improve the flow of, of the podcast and how we approach this. And then we might look at graphics or the thumbnails or like, and well, we went through a couple of thumbnail iterations yeah. already. Yeah, right. Iterations, yeah. Saying, all right. That. So then we found our bag on, on that. Now there's some other things that we're going to tackle. Right. So, and stay tuned, you know, these next few episodes, y'all are going to get some surprises actually. So, that's something that I think people should keep in mind. As a matter of fact, another thing that I can say we haven't done yet and held off was interviews. Yeah. All right. It's so like, let's understand what we're doing, how we want to go about this, how we want to have our format. Yeah. So we can know ourselves before we do collabs. You before know what I'm saying? Bring somebody into a hurricane. Yeah. We bring somebody into a hurricane <laughs> or somebody comes and pops us off. And we don't even know who we are yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. We got this random audience of people that come in and, and now now we got to give them more of that. We feel that urge to keep speaking to them in that voice when it's like that's not even who we wanted to be and how we wanted to go about it. Yeah. 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 So we put ourselves through the artist development. And, you know, I only say that not to brag, but like just to give you guys insight of what we're doing so you can see it in real time. And also to say, like, we truly are like students of this as well. And we try to just share our thoughts throughout our process, whether it's what we're actually doing on the music marketing side or what we're doing on our own side for our individual content creation, because shit, we really are curious about this and we, and it also helps to just talk about it because it helps harden our own thoughts, you yeah. know, in its own way. There's be things we think about as, uh, you know, technically content creators. And I, I think the, the interesting thing too about the hundred video point is I personally feel yeah. like, for a new content creator, it probably takes you about 40 to 50 videos to get comfortable anyway. Like I think about when I first started creating content. Yeah. It, it took, yeah, realistically, it probably took me at least like a year and a half, two years of like making content. So probably like, you know, around video like 60, 70, I was just kind of like, all right. But yeah. it also was expedited because of like doing like live streams and like the network calls and things like that. So if you take that out, who knows how long it would have took, right? So if you think about it, and it might take you 30 to 60 videos to get comfortable. And then that becomes a point where like you do okay, right? That's your new ground zero is okay, but you're on video 60. It's like, well, you still got, like now your next 40 videos might be decent. You know what I'm saying? Or like your next whatever might be decent. So yeah. Um, so I think there's kind of an aspect of it. And I was actually on a, had a consultation call today about this like, exact same conversation. Really? Yeah, it's crazy. That's why why this popped up. I wish I thought about this video while talking to it. I was like, yo, what? <laughs> Watch this shit meeting over, you know what I'm saying? But um, but I was breaking down to her that when you're in this stage of figuring it out, yeah, it feels shitty, but if you if you believe that you're gonna be continuing to do this and that you're really gonna stick this artist thing out, then this is just one, just a part of your catalog, mm -hmm. right? No different than if you make music today and you drop the shitty song in 2016, it's no different than that. I can still go to your Spotify and listen to that shitty song from 2016, but you better today, right? And like, but I as a fan, I like being able to go back and listen and see like, man, this motherfucker was trash back then, but hey, he kind of fired now, right? I look at the same thing with content. Whenever I find a content creator on any platform that I like, one of the very first things I do is scroll down their page and look at their, their first see couple of like. Yeah, I'm like, man, let me see what bro came from, man. You know, you, Cause you see crazy shit, but you're like, man, he was in like, a closet with the lights off and like a, a a cheap ring light or some shit. And now he got 10 million views on the video, bro. It'd be crazy, you know? So, so when, 
you know, in the future, when people are coming in through your phone, when you when you hit your hundredth video, hundred fifty, whatever, when uh, when things start to work for you, now these older, you know, less great videos are a part of the narrative, and they social prove you. Right, right. It's proof that hey, this person is being here grinding for a minute, doing thing. He or she didn't come out of nowhere. Like I can exactly. go back and see their TikToks from twenty nineteen. They're trying to figure it out or, or whatever. So I think that there's a valuable part in it in that aspect of it if you are an artist that seriously deep down believes that you gonna be here for a while that you're gonna at least be trying for a while you know what i'm saying it's one of those things like the thing i tell artists is like if you plan to do the artist thing for at least the next like two to four years then you know get started if you plan on quitting you know what i'm saying anytime in that time then yeah, don't waste your time you know what i'm saying I, I could get why you want to do it that. look that goes <laughs> along with this other stat by tube filter where they say that it takes an average of 22 months for a channel to reach 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Damn, that's crazy. 22 months? Yeah. Oh, so two years, basically? Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. Two so. years before you get that honey, not honey, that uh, monetization? That's basically, that's yeah. like, yeah. yeah. That's right. That's crazy. Actually. Which, I, which I would get. It's like, no, nah, it's almost like a high level internship. Let me see you grind this shit out for a minute before I start paying you. That's what it feel like. <laughs> Let me see if you got the dedication and the drive to stick it out over here. You know? I wouldn't say they're keeping people from being <laughs> successful, but you know, <laughs> they don't make it much easier on you for sure. Let's see this other topic though. Uh, on Brand Man Network, there was a really, really good question someone posed. Uh, for those of y'all who don't know about Brand Man Network, brandmannetwork.com. Right now, it is free, and that's where we put all of our strategies in, f- in the form of free courses that we get from our marketing agency and running big campaigns. Now, CJ Jordan Alexander said, what business do you steal your ideas from? Mm. He said, hey, I've been paying attention to the e-learning community for a bit of time and I've been thinking about how artists can take things from that business model and apply them in their careers. What industries do y'all think are worth paying uh, attention to? All right. So let's see what the answers are. I, I actually needed to get CJ to say, what did you learn from the even learning community? Yeah, exactly. Like, bro, leave us hanging yeah, like that. bro. That don't make no sense. <laughs> um, but I have some things that I obviously apply to it. Hey there, for the sake of a specific example, consider real estate. Maintaining a property along with having the right team for marketing and keeping customers in house. No pun intended. Is very similar I'm to how that. artist brands are managed in business. Some similarities include oh, shit. investing in the necessary maintenance costs for an attractive house or unit. Having music someone would listen to, you will make sure it's quality by buying the right equipment and having production and engineering to be optimal. Okay, so investing in maintenance, knowing the market, who lives there, keep potential customers close to buy in case tenant leaves. That's interesting. Okay, so knowing your fan base and where your strengths are in the music domain allows you to thrive. All right, I see that. So having a manager or advisor on your team as an artist, having the right property manager to deal with tenants and other back end work. Okay. So I'm, I'm not going to read all that. He, he gave an example. Y'all could pause the screen or just go to brandmannetwork.com. Again, it's free. Adrian Milanio. Shout out to Adrian Milanio, man. He, he's experiencing a big moment right now. Um, song doing what over the last week did like three million streams almost something crazy like that yeah. in the last week maybe something two. yeah maybe two or whatever but shout out to adrian uh like maybe we'll do an interview on of him at some point i pay attention to the real estate game too a lot of youtubers i watch do that real estate talk about business credit and how to leverage debt in order to make deals i'm basically doing the same thing with my music now he leveraging credit Oh yeah, yeah. Debt to make your yeah. deals. Yeah, Adrian in there, bro. He hey man. Yeah. He Adrian. Walk, he don't walk me through that. He in there. <sighs> Adrian here. Yeah, we gotta talk to you, man. Cause he's the money man who was doing the stuff with the grants and everything. Like Adrian knows how to get that money. By Brian Burnett says, I've been writing down a lot of ideas that I've been getting from brands like Geico and State Farm. I believe the way they make random funny moments into overall mm-hmm. idea of buying the insurance is genius and can be used in any content creator strategy. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I like that one. Yeah. So, because it forces you to think about how can I be creative more than just that straight line of listen to my song or pay yeah. attention to me as a whole. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Yeah. Like, what can I do creatively? And that goes back into the people who like bring people into their universe instead of just, I don't know. Just saying, hey, I got good insurance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and go straight to the, it costs X, Y, and Z, cheaper than such and such, right? Yeah. They, they go about it in a different way. Matter of fact, SNL, because of that, they did this State Farm commercial last week uh, or this skit. It's actually pretty funny. Only thing I've laughed at about SNL in a minute. Oh, yeah. I thought you meant John. I was like, damn, nah, that's dark, bro. Nah, not ever. Yeah, that's all not like, ever. Yeah, bro. But nah, <laughs> they're not that funny of a show to me, bro. They're not that funny. When I was younger, I liked Mad TV better. And Mad TV probably isn't even all that funny either. Damn, God damn. <laughs> I felt, I felt unnecessary. Like, you'd already made the point. Uh, well, <laughs> like, all right. Well, well dang. All right. <laughs> I've been paying attention to a lot of e-learning businesses. Okay, so CJ, let's see. Because of how efficient I think they are, they have to make valuable content regularly to stay relevant, and then they are designed with very low overhead compared to other industries. I'm still looking at other models to learn from. Mm. Okay. The, oh, the low overhead, keeping things tight. Creating content from your room or figuring out your own system. Because, yeah, we obviously have a content model, yeah, right? Really. Then we have the content that we create that can't even be put out in, into the world. So that's the content you got to pay for. Yeah. All right. I think that he's missing the idea of community. I know a lot of e-learning people don't do that, but we do community very well. Yeah. All right. That's yeah. something to take advantage of. Like, bro, CJ, you are in the community right now making this comment. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I like the idea overall of using businesses and other models to be inspired by. Uh, I think that's how you innovate by looking at other spaces and figuring out how you can flip that and apply that to your own, whether that's yeah. on the back end, non creative, or the creative side of things. Yeah. I mean, man, to be honest, man. Th th the innovation part is like cool. I think you have to do it just to learn shit about business in general because music business information as as great as it's gotten, I think in like recent times, last couple of years, still pretty fragmented. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, that's fine. a lot of the information tends to be more geared towards um like artists and you know more like the 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 music side of the business. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And I still think that there's a large gap divide between artists and like everything else about the music industry, right? So, like, I always look at like us, for example, like, you know, we have a sales team, right? We have salespeople, we, we, we do sales things. I didn't learn anything about building out a sales team from anything music industry related. I had to go look at sales in, in other places, real estate, insurance, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Clothing stores, I worked at to yeah. learn that shit. Like, nobody in music was teaching me sales. So, yeah, even I think, yeah, you're right. Like to be able to, because things that are usually innovative in music are like the things and other things. Like, damn, y'all just now doing that? That's crazy. Y'all just using SMS and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, I think you're right there. But like, just to like start learning some of these baseline business fundamentals that like you're not going to hear from a song or just, you know, randomly pick up on a tip. Like, sometimes you got to go outside of music to learn. And I think that the best people in music know how to do that. They know how to go look at another industry learn from it and then like oh, okay cool let me come back over here and do that because like i said like it's what's innovative in music is like regular business and other industries yeah yeah no that's that's very true and like every industry has its strengths yeah right music will be marketing yeah you know media manipulation so there's a lot of industries yeah. that are pretty slow on that where yeah, you'll be a genius if you take that and put it over there you know, they got the other 98 percent figured out I know <laughs> they got they they have building a real business figured out. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Music knows how to get all the attention. A lot of people get really good at those type of tactics, but don't understand how to create an actual business out of it. And then they don't get the money. Yeah. Right. Which is the point of business. So if you want to go <laughs> and, re and grade it in terms of actual business, yeah, un ever, in general, there's a lot of other industries that had that figured out a lot better. And for far less people, right, and far less level of success have more money. Right, yeah. It's crazy, bro. <laughs> like, you'll start learning from these other industries and start doubting why you're music. Like, why am I over here? Like, why am I? You made how much this week? Damn, that's crazy, bro. Let's, like, let's not bring that up. <laughs> let's not even bring that up, bro. <laughs> I think about it. I'm like, man, what if I did marketing for insurance companies, bro? Probably. I probably have at least $20 million right now. Hey, bro, it's not too late. 
You're right. It ain't too late. It's not too late. It ain't too late, bro. bro. Hey, man. You know, <laughs> do just like the same artist plan, man. You know, do what you do in music, but then flip monetize. It, yeah. Insurance, bro. Yeah, still going to get that that money money in other places. I mean, we talk about a lot about artists doing that, but the business people we know, most of them do that too. That is true, bro. Like the ones who are really, really entrepreneurial yeah. and getting it and have the money, money, they they're getting money out of music too. Yeah, I think I think I could sell insurance. Like I have a I have a clean record. You know what I'm saying? I nothing. You want to sell it or you want to market? It. It's different. I mean, both honestly. Well, I don't want to be one. So that's what yeah, I'm okay, saying. Yeah, I'm okay, thinking yeah, yeah, Corey yeah, no, gonna show up at no, your door. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no. I just want to market it and own it as Max. Like okay. you know, like like Corey's life insurance plan. Eight dollars a month. Dang, it's like no creativity in that name. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> don't hey. fly away insurance. All right. <laughs> I bet. Well, look. Speaking of advice and, and money and those type of things, there's a lot of artists that have advice these days. They they make a thing. It's almost cool to just drop your advice and your piece of mind. It is getting cool for artists to drop advice. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah is. it is. It is. <laughs> so. A post from Underground Sounds I actually wanted to highlight this, where they highlighted what they call the best advice from fellow art- artists. Now, you know, we can de- agree or disagree about some of these pieces of advice. Yeah, I think we should approach it. Agree or disagree. Agree or disagree? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just a meal says, keep working on your craft and be a social butterfly for real. Talk to more people, engage with fans or listeners to be a real person for real and be consistent. Yay or nay? Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. You got to music is all is a, is a juggling act between finding time to do your work and finding time to go talk to people. So I agree with that. I agree with that. OK, fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. I like the way you worded that. Yeah. All right. So Wolf Ace Joey says, don't be a fucking goober. Follow your heart. No, I agree with that. So I think you can't be a Google. You think you can't? Be I a think Google? sometimes you should go the opposite direction of your heart. Sometimes your heart can lead you wrong. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> I'm gonna say nay just because I don't know where some people's hearts are going. Yeah, exactly. Some people's yeah. hearts I can't trust. Yeah, exactly, bro. Nah. So nah, I'm 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 not with that one. <laughs> uh, Paris T W says, "Don't forget to enjoy life with the people you love. When you fail, wait, no. When you fall in love with creating music, it's easy to lock in so much that you neglect." What actually matters in the world? Mm, God, I'm going to let the artist, you know, decide on that. But I feel like that's a personal thing. Yeah, like, it's a, <laughs> you know, I, I enjoy my crowd so much I ignore what's going on around me. I, I, I agree with that. You know, I think entrepreneurs in general have a bad habit of locking into that. So that's why I can't quite. I don't know, man. Bad or good, man. I see. I feel like that, that shit's relative, man. Yeah. But I feel like we spend a lot of time. Listen to people telling us what creates maturity, what creates being immature, what's important, what's not important. And I feel like that scale is relative. Like maybe I'm less mature in that category that you think matters. And I don't think that shit matters. So maybe I don't want to be mature in that category. Yeah. But I'm very mature in understanding the things that I want to understand. But you know, it's funny. I just saw this tweet yesterday that said, um, I'm so glad that we as a generation all decide to start ironing clothes at the same time. <laughs> and I thought that was so funny because I was like, oh my God, it's not just me. I've ironed clothes in a minute, but I iron clothes. Really? Least, like, bro, what? Like a hand iron? I haven't used a hand iron at least like two years. <laughs> this man said a hand iron. Like, that's shit crazy, bro. Either what kind I'm, of iron are you talking about? What other iron is it? I mean, that's a good point. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, you got like the steam pressures, which are basically okay. like long board irons. You know what I'm saying? But like, I just throw my shit in the uh, dryer with the my dryer. Scoops. You know what I'm call it that. Bro, you need a decent dryer to do, be able to do that. Yeah. I've had dryers that can't no, accomplish you need a dryer that can hit at least like 200 degrees, bro. You're good. Hey, I've had, <laughs> and I, I look, I just got a new dryer. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and that has worked. But I've had a dryer for years that just, that didn't work, man. I'm like, what is this? Just throw it in a dryer and be unwrinkled. What is it? <laughs> That's shit beautiful. Like, I haven't touched. And actually, no, last time I used the iron one, we was in LA for that conference. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was that wasn't my choice. Hey, I iron, man. I'm cool with ironing. <laughs> I, I don't know about y'all, but I'm cool with ironing, man. I got that from my, my grandpa, though. It was, it was a whole thing. It's, it's like therapeutic for me. So I'm good. <laughs> Turn on some music. Motherfucking iron, bro. It's straight. <laughs> but 
I don't, I, there's a lot of times I don't iron though too. It's not like I'm ironing everything. Where you, you see them people with the crazy creases in a sweatsuit or something, like nah, that's that's a different thing. Yeah, but you can't be crispy all the time. Hey, nah. Then, then they don't know. <laughs> then they don't notice. You know. What I mean? <laughs> now Midwest says, don't try and be someone you aren't. You should always be yourself and embrace the things that make you unique as an artist and a person. Not attempting to create someone else's. I'm gonna say yay on that one. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm with that. 100 percent man. Yeah, yeah, you is what makes you unique. For sure. Now, how to express you and getting good at that whole process. That's a whole different Yeah, game. that's a whole different game. A whole different conversation. Yep. Star Marcy says consistency, self-discipline, humble yourself, then strive to be the best version of you possible. Okay. I like that. I'm yay. You yay in it? I'm yay in it. I I say yay with context, right? I think it works not from the idea of lack of progress. Because a lot of times people are like, you're fine just where you are. Maybe I'm not fine just where I am. You might be fine with me where I am, but I ain't fine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's not just being comfortable where you are and like, yeah, I'm already someone who's worthy. And nah, I'm, I'm not into that type of like speech personally. It don't do nothing for me. But the idea of paying attention to me to constantly improve me is good, right? So, yeah. like, the best version of me might be, okay, I'm good at this or I'm not good at it and I'm only focused on improving that thing versus paying attention on a, to someone on the outside and doing this arbitrary comparison. That's still yeah. not actually going to make me yeah. better anyway. It can only make me feel worse unless I choose to get inspired by it. But, you know, that's for some people, that's a trickier game. A lot of people get demoralized by somebody else's success. Yeah, you know I agree with that. I so, agree with that. you know, that's that's my caveat when I see that. 1916 Frosty. I like that name. Make sure you know who you're doing business with and have a lawyer look over any and all agreements, verbal agreement or being homies ain't enough. It's a biz at the end of the day. I got you that. Gotta yay that? Oh yeah, bro. Hey, man. You gotta yay that or you gotta Kanye that? Because you know Kanye don't like no contracts. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, got, <laughs> I got a regular yay. Yeah, you know, regular yeah. I got a regular yay, yeah, bro. <laughs> you always. In, I, only, I do feel like we are in a, a a space where like contracts aren't as frequent. Maybe because of the space that we come from. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't feel like. Man, I don't know. Yeah, but, I, but I would say for safety reasons, like when in doubt, have a lawyer look it over. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think things like contracts 100 percent matter. Um, there's times that you can technically go without when you're not, you know, doing business on a certain level. Yeah. Um, for a certain period of time. Right. It might not even be worth the investment to find out you fail. You invest five thousand dollars and create a contact con- a contract. And the product that you're trying to sell ain't even gonna sell. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's so, true. That's true. And, you, yeah. and can you take that risk when you know you're only making a thousand dollars a month or something? Right. Yeah, that, yeah. So that's that, a great point. Yeah. You know, it makes yeah. sense for everybody at the beginning. Yeah. Um, but that is something that you want to be able to bring into your system as soon as you can. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Oh, okay. K levels. This is a lot. Learn as many skills as you can. Video editing, make cover art, producing anything that will literally help you save more money and time. It increases reliability and the networking you can do and be involved in in other niches from these things will go a long way. More people will be interested in your brand and you will become somewhat self-efficient until the resources are handed to you. Consistency will skyrocket your control when things get done. I'm a yay this. I'm a yay this. I'm a yay this. It's great to get as many skills as you can, not just for being able to do them and be all, hey, I do everything, uh, top to bottom. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm a, what's the word in music we use? Not a, is it a one percenter? No, it's a hundred percenter, I believe. Yeah. Obviously, because I could do this, I could mix, I could master, I could do the vocals, late track, whatever, all that. Not just to have that bragging right, right? It's more so, as you grow, you'll be able to understand how those things work together even yeah. better, yeah. right? Because skills actually inform creative process as well, Yeah. right? I can think about this one little response in a marketing campaign because I ran that marketing campaign. I can think about, oh man, what about if when they got their welcome email after they bought this course, right? Or after they bought their merch, 
the first email is going to say this. And then the, the email that comes two days later is going to say that. Right. Just because I've done that before. And I know that people are used to getting fulfillment emails when they get their merch and people like are, are also used to seeing follow up emails or maybe they aren't used to seeing it in merch. But I've done that in courses. Mm -hmm. Right. And I can pair that together. And I'm only going to think about that because I've done it before. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shoot, man. Yeah. we This thing right here, this picture will be great for that campaign. Like, you, so when you have skills, it's going to help you see things way differently. While some people are seeing shit in 2D, you seeing that shit in 3D, 5D, 6D, 7D. So like, I, I love that in terms of having a lot of skills. But there does get this point, point where you need to focus on where your strengths are. Yeah. All right. And not try to learn everything before you have somebody on your team or hire somebody. Some people think they need to learn everything before they hire people. And that inhibits your growth. Yeah. Like sometimes yeah. you need to hire somebody and damn near learn from them. Yeah. Right. And then use that experience. And then there's there's methods. So that's a whole nother conversation of being able to learn without getting screwed over by that person. Let's say you, you, you might say, oh, well, if I hire this person and I've never done it before, how do I know if they're screwing me over? Or how if I, do I know what the quality of their work is and how long it really takes all these things? There's ways you can do that, uh, which is a deeper conversation. But then sometimes you might start with a consultant, right? Or multiple people to give you different perspectives on that same thing. All right, there's a way, but like the people who move fast, they learn from other people because you can only learn but so much from yourself by yourself. Yeah. You yeah. just can't. Yeah. Yeah. I agree, I agree with all that. And then the other part that's interesting to me too is he talks about how it becomes a really valuable networking tool. Right. So I one thing I don't think artists think about enough is that other artists are very competitive. <laughs> and when you introduce yeah. yourself to another artist as a fellow artist. It's not always the most well received, right? You become yeah. they become closed off to each other. They become hostile. Artists, y'all are very doggy dog type of people. But that same artist, you know what I'm saying, that that shut you off because he learned you were artist. If you had told him like, hey, I do graphic design, I do mixing, I do content creation or something, that person could have been a little bit warmer towards you, maybe opened up and then maybe would have got you in room with some a room with someone that, you know, you weren't getting in trying to lead with yourself as an artist, you know? So I do think that part of that is like very underrated in terms of like, you're essentially giving yourself different weapons to, to blow the door down with, you know, if the first one don't work and I'm an artist, oh, then that shit didn't work. Yo, bro, I also do mixing. Oh, that shit opened the door. Bet. Are you cool with that? Now I'm in the room to eventually sway you to give me a chance on that initial thing that I told you about. Yeah. Hearts, right? I've so definitely seen I, that yeah. type of thing happen before. Yes, yeah, so I think that's it's very underrated. Yeah, let's speed through some of these. Let's say Wax Jack says, put as much effort in your music as your marketing, networking, relationships, and content. Be successful artists. Being a successful artist isn't just making good music. Amazing music doesn't get you far in the, if no one's listening. Well, I... I all right, so I didn't agree at first, but then the last point brought it home. He said, put as much effort in your music as your marketing, as everything else, which I do agree. To, I think he's flipping it. That's yeah, what he's really yeah, trying to confusing, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. put as much into everything else as you're doing to your music. That's really what he's trying to yeah. say. Yeah. I say yay to that. Yeah, that I agree with. All right. Make a song a day. At least there's going to be improvement regardless. Mm. Nah. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. You might go back to like the content thing from Mr. Beast, maybe. I say to okay. <laughs> it's practice versus intentional practice. And that's what people get wrong. People can practice poorly and not get the results that they okay. should. Yeah, right. So you can't just say a song a day. You gotta do it with focus. And maybe a song a day for some people, they're just throwing trash and thoughtlessly. Maybe it's a waste of time. Maybe they need to do a song every two days. Now I do think frequency. I mean, undeniably, it's not even about what I think. Frequency, undeniably, is one of the like most impactful vehicles, generally speaking, yeah. to improve. However, intentional practice, right? Not, oh, I'm going to just shoot the ball 300 times. I'm going to pay attention to where my elbow placement is, where my, my foot placement is, right? So, musically, what does my verse sound like, right? How do I, what does my feedback loop even look like so I can know if I got better or not? 
right? So yeah. what are you paying attention to? But yeah, I do agree with the frequency idea, but you have to have some measure of what you're trying to improve. And that could just mean I'm just trying to do better hooks right now and not think about everything else because that's one of the best ways to improve, like actually focus in on something. You can't yeah. like just make a whole song unless you're trying to practice on making songs. There's people who like freestyle, right? But they're not good at creating songs, yeah. right? So yeah. So there's there's... There's different things to focus on. Um, now, try not to act like Cardi. <laughs> yay. I would go yay. Yeah. Yay, yay, bro. Yay, yay on that one. Yeah. Or yeah, bro. Because the, the, the Cardi Cardi clone syndrome is is, is, is is killing us all. Not even like, I don't, I don't even mean stylistically, like music wise. I mean, everybody being like, oh, Playboy Cardi don't do nothing. And he lit. Let me be like Cardi and also do nothing. And maybe I'll get lit. We got yeah. we to stop that. Yeah. Playboy yeah. Cardi. He, Playboy Cardi didn't start that. But for whatever reason, he's the go-to example of today. I will say he's a great example of it, but obviously there's a lot of people that have clones and mm -hmm. that clone might be a phase. Don't let it be any more than that phase. Yeah. All right. Jake Gordon 19 says, know the difference between hate and criticism. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And just someone criticizing something doesn't mean they're right. Also true, but you should always consider what people have to say. I'm gonna give it a 97%. Yay! I don't always consider what some people have to say. Everything else, I'm going with heavy. But yeah. should I always consider what people have to say? I don't know. Consider it, maybe not. Will I hear it out? Yeah, sure. Why yeah, not? I don't know. there's probably a nuance in there. Yeah, <laughs> we're probably. I was on the so on the same page with everything else. We're probably on that same page yeah. for the most part. <laughs> But yeah, yeah I'm getting it. <laughs> Consider it sounds like more respect than some people deserve. <laughs> <laughs> One princess, don't force the sound that doesn't work. And this is a left field take, but don't try to create a new wave. It'll naturally happen if you follow your heart. Oh shit! It's like it's a great hot take. Lies. <laughs> oh, I mean, this is the follow your heart part. The follow your, I thought the follow your heart part is what made it invalid, but everything before that part. <laughs> It was pretty valid. Yeah, no, I don't. I think creating a new wave naturally happening is. Um, I don't. I think that's even necessarily a, a lie. What? Yeah, like it doesn't naturally happen if for everybody. It's given as general advice, right? Mm. I think the more important thing is people should stop trying to create new waves. That first part. Don't. What does he say? Don't force the sound. It don't work. Mm, yeah, don't force a sound that don't don't work, but also don't try to create a new wave. Oh, yeah, Period. Yeah. yeah, that focus on you and just doing you and building out whatever you want to build, but like focusing on the wave that's beyond yourself. There's yeah. other factors, and you could be a very unique artist and have nobody else really follow up. Yeah, in your way, yeah. but you still won. Why does it matter if it's a whole wave or not? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think sometimes. Artists think about things that that are beyond the success of themselves before they get successful themselves. Yeah, but, but that's why I have to agree with the it'll naturally happen part. Because like you, like you said, like the the fact that that make a wave it, in my head is all right. There's a core sound. Mm -hmm. There are multiple people doing that core sound. Okay, and then that core sound is very popular within a particular niche, right? Okay. So like you said, out the gate. Your whole wave momentum could be killed off by the fact that you're the only one doing this shit. Just like that, no wave. You know you're just a, a unique artist in whatever aspect this is, right? Um, could have a bunch of people doing the sound and it doesn't get popular in, in the space. You know what I'm saying? Right. Then the, 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 it's not still not a it's still not a wave, right? You could be successful and it not be a wave. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So why does that matter? No, well, I don't know. I don't think it does. I I never get the thing that confuses me about the wave part is that most artists hate when they're being copied or feel like they're being copied. But like I said- That's a lie. An, an important part of Artists it say they hate when they're being copied, <laughs> but they want to be copied because that's how they get validated a lot of times. I mean, yeah, I agree, but you know, that ain't what they saying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm just taking the comments and the DMs and consideration. But it's like a, a big part of the wave thing is there are people that arguably sound, all sound the same because they're all making this type of thing. You yeah. Know? And most of them hate that. I think even artists that get attributed to particular ways, that they usually don't really like that, right? You'll hear them say, oh, yeah, I mean, people keep comparing me to the woo-woo, but I think I'm different because of whatever. Like, no, you're not. No, you're not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, and that's because a lot of times they're trying to escape yeah. the wave. Trying to get out the box. Right? right, and get out that box. And you, that yeah, that wave is putting me in a space that I don't necessarily want to mm-hmm. be in. So that's a whole another alternative perspective of this. It's like you probably don't even want to be in that wave mm-hmm. or, or some wave in general. So I, I don't know. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's tough. Because waves are created by fan perception. Here's a group of people yes. I think are the same for whatever reason. We like all of you. Y'all appears in our eyes. You know what I'm saying? Cool. This is this is the sound that we fucking with. Like fans created waves. You know what I'm saying? That's why it has to it has to naturally happen. You know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. The real Ron NYC says, just keep going. Even if at first it feels like nobody is liking your stuff. There's eight billion people on this planet. There's gonna be somebody that enjoys your music as much as you do. Nay. Nay? Yes. <laughs> I want to say yay. Like my heart, my heart is leaning towards yay because of the eight billion people part. Because I do think that, bro. I do think, like, I don't want to name artists, but where's some artists out here that's like, it, it proves that. You know what I'm saying? Somebody gonna like it. Um, but I don't believe that everyone should keep going. Sometimes <laughs> there, there are some artists that sometimes I hear I'm like, nah, bro, you should you should quit. See, you can <laughs> all for a uh, different look. I'm just saying the baseline. <laughs> <laughs> that is it's not necessarily gonna mean somebody's gonna like it as much as you do, especially. They might like it though. Yeah, they might like it. We didn't yeah. say that. Yeah. But I don't know. I feel like if I go out there and make a track today and play it for eight billion people, I don't know. But you might get at least a thousand fans. Nah, I think I think even the worst of most terrible of music with enough exposure, you get at least a thousand fans. All right, let's really back and be real. <laughs> Why does that shit matter? We say shit like this, but bruh, it's 8 billion people, but you're not going to get all 8 billion people to see your shit. Yeah, that's true. Like, some of these 8 billion people don't even have access to the internet. Yeah, some fall outside your, your niche. Some don't even speak your language. Yeah. Some don't like your type of music, right? So we're not talking about 8 billion people. Like, we should stop throwing out these big ass numbers as loose inspiration. <laughs> It's just not a thing, man. Like I be, I get it, right? And you can use it to drive you, but at some point we gotta make sure that we pay attention to the product. And yeah. I think a lot of times we ignore the product more than we should. Yeah, hundred percent, bro. Like, yeah, I remember I once had this uh this ad campaign like really early on as a marketer, and I just remember. The ad hit a million people and we maybe got like a hundred conversions out of it. And that shit blew on. I was a damn bro. A million people looked at this shit. Mm-hmm. And 999,000 of them was like, nah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So then you have to ask yourself, is it fucking worth it? Yeah. No, I agree. That's what I said. That's why I said I disagree with the yeah. part of always just keep going. Now, from a motivational standpoint, all of you listening, yes. Everybody keep going. Follow your dreams. Do you. Now, have I heard something before from someone and I thought, yo, you should stop? Yes, 100%. <laughs> as long as you focus on improving, <laughs> I don't have any problem with keep going. All right? Maybe you aren't in a place where your music is that good. It's like when Roddy Rich made that uh, post yeah. about people not fucking with his music like five years ago or whatever. And he was kind of like doing it like a kind of stunt. Like, yeah, people didn't believe in me back then or whatever, or didn't like my stuff. But I'm like, hey, play me the music, though. What did it sound like? Exactly. Did that music, was that on the same quality level as the box? Yeah, it's like, I might agree with him. Yeah, like, it <laughs> might not have been good. But you improved, you're better. So that's completely different. Yeah. So maybe where you are today, musically, product-wise, whatever, just isn't worth the time. But, because, again, you got to ask yourself, is it worth, if I got a product that I'm trying to sell, is it worth me having to run through 500 million people just to finally find some buyers? Do I have the time? Yeah, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Yeah. It's probably a lot of money just to finally find that. So I think, again, that's, you know, it's a grain of salt. Yeah. You know, it, we got to pay more attention to strategy, product um, improvement, those things that are a lot more in our control than trying to help, just trying to get everybody to see as much as possible. And this culture is so big on 
Like, just get views, just get views. And how many times we've seen people get views and that ain't changed anything? Shit don't mean nothing. Don't mean nothing, bro. So, no, that's that's where I'm at with it. Um, and that is it. That is it. So, hopefully, y'all like that segment. That was an interesting segment. We hadn't done anything like that before, but I do think that they did share some interesting advice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. There were some good ones in there. There were some gems. But if anything, I feel like that's the mentality. We should look at a lot of this advice at, uh, with in general. Like, we should actually scrutinize it. Yeah. We just take this inspiration and just be like, oh, my gosh, this is good. It's good stuff. Watching shit like, Nigga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I do that all the time, bro. I'll see some advice and be like, I don't need to listen to this shit. Like, <laughs> just scroll or, or get out my I've, I, I've I've seen advice that make me get off of Instagram. <laughs> and it's been positive advice, too. Telling me that I can do it. I'm like, get this shit out of here. <laughs> I ain't in the mood for this. I don't feel like being motivated. <laughs> even, 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 like, I don't feel like being motivated. It just, I don't know, man. It's like, you gotta, uh, you gotta like bring it back down and be realistic in how you map it. Not make your goals smaller necessary, necessarily. It's, I have to, who am I getting this from? Is there a real strategy? Are they just regurgitating some general shit? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's so many factors when I when I see advice. Yeah, perspective. Where, you, where are you giving me this information from in terms yeah. of the point in your life you are? Yeah. And it's like, oh, you, y'all, you just saying this stuff because it gives likes to people who are in a certain mental space. And I get it. Do what you got to do. I don't believe in you motivational know I mean? content. You know. Uh, I want to believe. I do believe in motivating people. You know what I mean? But be motivated by these facts. <laughs> <laughs> Let that motivate you. <laughs> hey, well, well, we do have a quote from someone who's done the thing as well to share. Uh, appreciate Josh for sliding this over to us. Pharrell said, if you're a singer, don't be afraid to have a coach. Even the best singers that you know and love have trainers and coaches. Like all muscles, your larynx and esophagus have to be trained. A coach can be there to push you farther than you would on your own. I agree with that. Now, that's some motherfucking advice, bro. That's some good advice. You're right. Yeah. See? Yeah. In a, in a very weird, specific context, like voice training. But I feel like it applies to so many other things. That's man. what made it good advice. Yeah. Oh, the yeah, shit was specific. True. Yeah, that's true. That's you know true. what I mean? It wasn't even about no motivation. It was just, hey, specific and... This is going to get you to where you go, right? Yeah. It's a tool that you can use. It's a mindset and process that you can use. That's why you wanted the goats for real. Yeah. I'm mean, a vocal coach, performance coach, yeah. um, on camera coach, marketing consultant. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm Everything else, man. Yeah. You got to have gotta, yourself. Yeah. You got to have your advisors. You got to have your, your Justice League around you, you know. Self improvement. And I'm big on investing early, especially when you invest in yourself. Like, I was going to wait until I got a certain amount of money before I got a trainer. But I got a trainer, then got a certain amount of money. That's true. Mm. Oh, oh. I'm not saying that was for everybody. Yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah. Let me apply that to everybody's situation. I had to think about that. You yeah. know what I mean? Hold up. I'm just saying. That's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> and there are situations. So let me draw a line with this. Number one, a good example is that conversation we had about jay-z like would you have the meeting or have, do 500k yeah, yeah we had the conversation but one thing i should have said during that conversation was the opportunities that come from meeting somebody like that don't necessarily happen and they're not available to someone who don't who doesn't already have something to take advantage of yeah right if i don't have a business or, or something that i can move forward then i don't know i might just need to take 100k i mean 500k should I probably take 100K? Because if I, I'm just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to talk to him and have a good time. And literally, if he has, oh, if he says, oh, man, I'm looking for a house, but I'm not a real estate agent. And he says, man, I need a chef, you know, because I'm trying to get back in shape and I'm not a chef. Right. Or I'm trying to looking for investment opportunities. Like if I have zero that can like be poured into then I probably wouldn't even get the benefits from being around somebody like that. Yeah. Right. So, and that, and that doesn't just go for a Jay-Z, by the way, that goes for anybody. There's people in your life, right. Just around you. Once you start to do something, right. They'll start to bring you opportunities. Cause now they know 
that, oh yeah, this is what Sean does, right? I got homies, you got homies that are not in music who will send you people who are doing music because they know that you do music, right? Yeah. And that you're helping music marketers. But if, you, if they didn't know that, you, you would have had no idea of a lot of these random second, third, fourth party people that you don't, that they know, Yeah. right? So, you know, you have to have something that's, that can be taken advantage of and exploited by learning, um, teaching, uh, like being involved with somebody like that. So for me, me getting a trainer, all right, something that helps, you know, like a physical trainer, by the way, in this particular situation, like health, clarity, you know what I mean? Sluggishness. My mind was in a, was in a better space. My body was in a better space. My energy is in a better space to then take advantage of the vehicles that I've already created. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I could just be a in shape dude on a block doing nothing. You know what I mean? That also comes with, you know, what it comes with. It, that, that does come with it, what, what it comes <laughs> with. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, there, 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 there would have been nothing for me to grow or money related necessarily um, that could have happened. But uh, the, again, though, the idea is just investing in yourself, investing in yourself. It's hard not to see some level of return when you invest in improving yourself, whether it's a skill, especially skills. Yeah. Especially skills, like, period. Um, all right, cool. Now let's move on to a little thought process on how did Rick Ross <laughs> hit three billion dollars? <laughs> let's talk about it. You know what I mean? Where's Rick Ross go to three billion? Now this is one of my rules. I don't share this with many. I leave no money on the table. What does that mean? What that means is on a Friday night, I may charge you 150k to come to your venue and perform. Oh yeah, I I, I know where this is going. Right on Tuesday, I may take 75 from you instead of us just sitting around doing nothing. Let's go get some money because you know what? Over here at Rose Enterprises, is we will not let that two dollars walk in and leave. How much money have you allowed to walk out of your? establishment because of another small amount of money that you could have easily had them tell hey i need that next week we got to find a way to keep the money once i got my first million i realized it's the same distance to 10 million from 100k that it was 100k to a million 1 million to 10 it's the same distance i just gotta go get it hey he's made bank man it's a lot of wing stops there is a lot of wing stops it's a lot of wing stops i think that that mentality though for real is something that can be applied to many things, right? Whether it's like, I'm going to improve. If it's only 1%, we talked a lot about improvement. Mm. I'm going to take the money that's on the table, leave no money on the table, figure out how to get it. Maybe it's not just a no right now. Maybe it's a, hey, all right, can we do this next week? Because I still want the money, but maybe there's a different opportunity at hand that I can't get rid of. Like, I can't say, oh, this is 150K. I'll take that 75K on a different day when I have less to lose for it yeah. in terms of opportunities and comparison. So I, I get that. And it's funny. He's talking to somebody who's the same fucking way. Yeah, bro. Like yeah, this is Grant, man right there. Grant Cardone, bro. We know that now he's over billions of in real estate, right? Yeah. I've seen this man like talk about his $50 million deals. And I just left that and then sell $30,000 courses and tickets. And I seen this man go hard selling like a $4.99 booklet in the mix of this stuff. And I'm talking about going hard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, dang, bro, this dude, like, he just own it and still be doing it himself where somebody at his level might just, like, let somebody else run it. Yeah. Right? Especially for certain sales and things like that. So, like, I think that mentality is the most important thing to really take. And I know some people want to live different levels of lives, right? So maybe you don't want to like be all in in that type of way. Cool. All right. Maybe you want to be enough to get to 10 million financially and, and look at it that way. Or you want to be 10 mil and mo monthly listeners musically or one mil monthly listeners, right? The, the levels um, vary, but we know. Yeah, at the highest levels, it's the extreme of that type of mentality. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, now I like the overall mentality being like, "Hey, man, just get get all the money," you know? Because I I do think um, the the big bags will make you overlook the little bags and feel like the little bags aren't important, right? Mm -hmm. So if an artist has a a hundred k deal, a fifty k deal, a ten k deal, and a one k deal on the table, they could hypothetically take all of it. Like I know a lot that would be like, oh, "I'm just taking a hundred k." Maybe the 50K, I don't even need to touch the 10K and the 1K. It's just little money compared to 10 and 50, which is true. 
right? But in that scenario, you only got 150K. In the first scenario, you would have had, what, 161K. But that's your $11,000 add up, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that, like once it hits a couple of times, so, mm-hmm. you know, it's like $2 is $2, but $2 a million times over is $2 million, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I, I do think that, um, like I said, like the, the, the small opportunities, and I'm not saying to anyone like undervalue yourself, you know, like you said, it's, it's a time thing. Like, do I have the time to take on this risk right now? Yep. Um, compared to the other opportunities I, I have coming in, was I not going to be doing anything today anyway? Shit. Yeah, it's only a thousand dollars, but I ain't had any plan to do but play the game all day, you know what I'm saying? Chill with my homies. I, I could go pick up this little bag, right? So I think it's important to like weigh, the, you know, well, I guess not necessarily like look at the the money is the only, um, I guess point of value or like thing to determine the value, but also like the money in relation to the time and what you had to do that day, that day anyway. You know yeah, because I, I we've taken shit like that. Like I've had people reach out to me like, yo, you want to do this panel? You know what I'm saying? What's your speaking fee? Tell them the fee. You know what I'm saying? But, oh, we could do this. I'm like, you know what I mean? I'm going to be down the street anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, I was going out that way later today anyway. Why not? You know what I'm saying? Let me swing by, pick up an extra yeah. two bands or something, and then go home. You know? So, yeah, I resonate with that. I get that. I think the thing that gets missed, too, in a lot of these situations is the next level of it, which is investing, right? Mm-hmm. So, if you've gotten yourself in a position where you can invest. And that doesn't mean I put it in stock or real estate or something that I'm not active in. Like it might, it might just be something that you're active in, like your education, whatever that is. But when you have a place to put money to work, every dollar matters even more, right? Because I'm multiplying these dollars. So yeah, I took that 11K, but I had somewhere to put that 11K that was going to turn it to 50K. Yes. Right? Yes. And I think when you look at a lot of these people, they have somewhere to constantly put it so, or they know that they're going to find somewhere to put it, which is why they're cool with taking that sum. So it's not just even like, oh, so I can have that amount of money more. They know that, hey, I'm going to be able to put this. I know how to flip it. and I Or I know that stuff happens, too. <laughs> so yeah. I might lose some money on some like whatever random event type stuff, but then I had this extra padding, right? So when you have that mentality, it's not just about the money itself. There's other variables beyond that specific dollar amount that could either make it more or could at least create a safety net of some sorts. Yeah. You know exactly. what I mean? Yeah. I so like I I I definitely feel like that that was one of those things that again could feel like fluffy and you just turn it off but when you kind of when you look at the levels and then when you watch rick ross and his career it makes me break it down and think of it a little bit deeper so just a couple of notes on rick ross's career look net worth we know can be wrong but right now the internet says his net worth is 45 million what's more important it says from December 1995 to June 1997, that's two years, Rick Ross worked as a correctional officer earning $1,000 a month. Mm. That's two. a lot. I feel like in 95, 97, that's probably what, like. It's decent. Yeah, decent money by then, probably. It's not, not, not great, but it's decent. I love somebody sure. to confirm what that for me. I was five at the time, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you know, that's like a, a starter job still. <laughs> 2000, but in 2005, right, eight years later, he went on to sign with Suave House Records under the pseudonym Teflon to Don. Ross later transferred to Slip and Slide Records, which at that time had Trick Daddy signed as an artist and eventually changed his stage name to Rick Ross and released platinum album Port of Miami in August 8th, 2006. So from 1997 to 2006, nine years later. He's dropping that debut album mm-hmm. that you know took off, right? Ross then went on to release Hustling in 2006. I didn't realize that wasn't on there. I'm confused. Hold up. Nah, this is just the R- R- Hustling was on Port of Miami, so they got some of this messed up. Uh, went on to l- release Hustling in 2006, a song that reportedly landed him, him in the middle of a bidding war, according to Celebrity Net Worth. Ross received an Offer from Sean Diddy Combs, 
Bad Boy Entertainment and Irv Gotti's Murder, Inc. He ultimately signed a multi-million dollar deal with Jeff Def Jam Records, which was owned. No, it wasn't owned. It was ran by Jay-Z at the time. All right, about to have me out here misquoting people. Yeah, everybody people, get you, get you people gonna get the me. Comments, they gonna get like, me, man. Gosh. Nah, he was president at the time. <laughs> he didn't own it, but he was president. And then he started his own record label three, mil, million, uh, three years later called the Maybach Music Group. And in 2014, Ross purchased the largest real estate in Georgia, 5.8 million Evander Holyfield's old spot. All right, so 97, he had just left from being a correctional officer making 1K a month to, what's that? Mm, what, 14, 17 years later, buying a $58 million house. No, $5.8 million house. Big difference, right? Hey, 17 years? 50 million? Being 5.8. But being up like that, <laughs> I, I like it. I like it. Shoot, man. So I think. This is why, like you know, you see that path and see that journey, that story. At some point, we're probably gonna see a movie on Ross. I definitely think so. He's he's, he's had an interesting enough of a life, so he deserves one of those. And, and he's a character. Yeah, he's, he's definitely a character. So like you know, you you get enough, and you see that type of story. You know, going from a spot that I mean, going from like a thousand a month to owning a spot that has one hundred nine rooms in it. Dog. You said 109? 109 rooms. Oh, damn. All right. So, look, man, like, the inspiration is real, but that mentality, like, I find when you talk to a lot of people who have a certain amount of money or a certain level of success, those small things are actually very serious to them. Mm-hmm. Like, it'll sound like some super fluffy shit until you like in it and you're doing it yourself and you realize just looking at it that way mm-hmm. makes a big difference yeah. over time. Yeah. So, like, definitely don't slip on that. Don't leave no money on the table advice. But, Leaving no money on the table. I also said, I saw Rick Ross one time say, like, he want everything that's his. That's his. So that ain't mean he's taking somebody else's money. You know what I mean? Like, hey, there's some money on the table. That money ain't mine. I haven't heard, you know, crazy, crazy uh, uh, accusations of Rick Ross, like, taking somebody else's money like that. I'm sure one or two out there. Yeah, it'll be there yeah. for sure. <laughs> but generally speaking, I think that's important to yeah. to note. So five ways to lazy seller, seller stop short. This is a great note that I think relates to this conversation a lot. So it goes, we're, we're talking about this because it goes along with the idea of leaving money on the table. But tell us what y'all think about these in the comments. Now, five ways that lazy sellers stop short. One, they lose track of someone interested but not yet ready to buy. As an artist, how many times do we have people who see something from us and they're interested, but they're not ready to become a fan because they haven't seen enough of us yet? Mm-hmm. Right? Dang, like, what was the name of that artist? But I never see him again, so I can't find that artist, so I just forget about him. Yeah. And I'd be wanting to, like, find the page, find the song, and I can't even remember because you stopped. That visibility stopped as well. Yeah. All right. Um, be slow to follow up when someone hands you a referral. I don't know how that one relates to artists directly, but when it comes to sales, hey, yeah, when someone sends you, oh, and actually, I do now see it. There's times when I've linked artists with somebody or told them to reach out on my behalf and they don't follow up. Like they think, oh, just because I don't hear from somebody, that that person's like being funny or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's like people are busy. Do not be surprised at how busy people are. Yeah, shit happens. Shit does happen. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they legit missed it. Don't be afraid to follow up, especially when there's a referral at hand. Yeah. Especially. You can even then follow up with the person who did the referral and be, and be like, hey, man, I haven't heard back from such and such. Can you check in? Or they t- might make, might say, yeah, just hit them up again, man. Don't don't worry about it. You know, um, keep no connection with an annual subscriber until it's a, a renewal. Um, how do we keep no connection with a annual subscriber until there's no renewal? How does that relate to artistry? I don't know. Sometimes I, ah, I think I see what they're saying. Actually, you don't pop up until it's time to get the money. Okay, okay. I thought I was saying like I thought that was the advice, like to do that. That's all. Like, no, know. no, yeah, no. Like saying, yeah. This is a, like being yeah. a lazy seller. Yeah. 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 So hey, no, no. Yeah, man. Like don't act like. You know me now. 
Yeah. Yeah. So that's the whole idea. Of like, yeah, every single video shouldn't be promo. Every single video shouldn't be like merch. Every time they see you, it can't just be about money. You yeah. got to keep some connection beyond. Right. And also don't make assumptions and create a story in your mind. Who is huge. Again, that goes back to even little stuff like this person has a guy back to me. Oh, man, they must not fuck with me. Or oh, they, they all these stories that we're building up and it might not even be so be that. Yeah. All right. And there's other categories. But yeah, assumptions and building those stories in your mind is damaging. We've all made that mistake before. Yeah. It's like when artists are like, oh, I can't do that. My fans will never go for that. So you don't even know that. You You don't even know. Put it out there to see how they feel about it. You don't even know. And I'm very, um, like, critical of when I do that. Like, I'll notice, oh, man, come on now. You're building a story. You don't even know what's happening. You have no reason to even say that this is true it could be one of the possibilities but you don't know for real for real yeah. so at least stop carrying your energy as you know that this is the answer you know what i mean yeah. wait and see yeah you might be right but yeah. you could be wrong um and then the last one continue to work with people who are not the most influential and in buy in the buying decision now this is interesting so they say lazy sellers continue to work with people who are not the most influential people in making the buying decision mm. i don't know now that might be one i i can't see i feel like that's more naive than lazy like because i i can the only instance i can think of where like i've been there before and then that was like i genuinely didn't know like you think this person is the person with the buying power mm. and you know you you, you buddy, buddy up you're doing the work and then you let learn like it's like a motherfucker you never met that really has the control. You know what I'm saying? There's naivety to that, but at the same time, maybe a laziness because you don't want to approach right the person who actually uh, has you, some you to power. You're comfortable with. Yeah, you're just yeah. trying to stay in your comfort zone with it. Yeah. Right? I think I've I've seen that in music in a lot of different ways. So yeah, I, I can see that. Right? Um, even that, even if that's your fan base or the people that you allow to, I don't know, market your music. I remember being in a space, underground Atlanta scene, at a period of time, and it clicked to me. I was like, these artists don't really care if they're that successful or not. And I see other artists on the other side of the city are doing and moving different, and they actually don't come to any of these events. But I see their career moving forward. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't know. I think I'm with the wrong people. <laughs> For real. <laughs> that, so I think that right there is probably what they're saying. Yeah. Like you're you're around the wrong bunch or dealing with the wrong bunch. And it takes awareness, but then also legitimate action to get out of that space. Cause there are a lot of people who are happy with the circle jerk. They're happy with the, hey, we all know each other, so we can create this, this um small community that we are all popular in versus you know taking that step and that leap yeah, going to the other side of town to go to the other side of town yeah you know what i mean so yeah that i think that's actually a good note it gave me something to think about which goes back to our conversation at the beginning of looking at other industries yeah right it makes you think right we just looked at five different things that people relate to sales and then I said, how can we relate that to music? And it actually gave me a couple of little, you know, little epiphanies. <laughs> so look, it's, it's a, it's a great practice. It really is. It really is. Um, now last but not least, let's talk about the fact that Lotto got these panties, <laughs> you know, and these panties are going for numbers. Lotto, if y'all don't know, right. Has some cheetah print panties and they are, on auction at the moment in real life on eBay. It started at 99 cents. Well, we gotta see what it's at now. Yeah. What where, where is it at now? We looked everywhere. It's gone. Oh, is it gone? It's gone. Did she sell it? Hold on, man. I gotta go. It might be official. So check this out. Corey told me about this probably about 30 minutes ago now. No, no, it was before the podcast. So let's just say it was an hour ago, right? And it was at sixty thousand dollars. We checked back like 15 minutes later and it was at $90,000. Yeah, let me find this link. Man. All right. I can't believe that. On eBay. So it's gone. It's gone, man. But let me let me just say something important about this <laughs> that I think is is dope, right? The, the lesson from the panties. Now, Lotto could have sold anything 
Like she could have came up with this entire merch strategy. She could have, you know, fulfillment, design, all that stuff. But this was a novel idea that was going to get attention. And she made at least 93 bands, that last number that we saw yeah, off of that. At least. three bands, bro. Off of just a pair of panties. It sounds like the comments got, got any intel on where it kind of landed up. Yeah. Yeah, we can open that up and see. So, I think one thing to keep in mind is just the creativity. And I know you might not have a fan base at a certain extent, so it might be hard to get attention for something like this. But when you, as you build, even within your own community, it doesn't mean that you have to be able to get to 90,000, but you do something like this, per se, right? You might see more money from that one item than you would get from a typical campaign within your community. So maybe you have to grind and sell a whole bunch of merch and make 2K, but then you might come up with some random novel thing that's able to get you 1500 by itself that one item or that yeah. set of five items right yeah just paying attention to your audience this works for her it wouldn't work for some people right yeah and just being creative and having fun with it can create opportunities like this because it could have bombed as well but it was at least a story yeah right so people would have been talking about it even if it never sold for for nothing even if it was just a lie you know what I mean? <laughs> like yeah. it would have stole and had a story. Have fun because a lot of times when you're having fun, that's when the best stories happen. Things that could be flipped into narratives, and you know, and then you might find something like find out something wonderful. You might look go crazy and and sell for a hundred k, or look, you might have made an extra little five dollars, yeah. and that's a story to tell too. Yeah, man. And like you said, like the, the story of trying to put it together is, is interesting in itself, you know, because what's funny about this to me is that I'm pretty sure she started out trolling, you know, like she had the idea. I, I, I definitely think so. But she be doing not she like this all the time, like, you know, selling her, her, her garments and things, but she'd be fucking with her audience. Um, But it makes me think about this one marketing stunt i saw like two years ago uh it's from this, this marketer named billy jean you know you know billy jean is yeah 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 Yeah. so y'all know bro billy jean is like this very interesting guy like goat internet marketer but he had this campaign where he was running and i always remember this shit he had uploaded the picture of his hands out like this on instagram and he was like today only on sale nothing you will get nothing nothing will come to you you know what i'm saying like you are purchasing nothing and he was selling it for like something crazy but like a hundred dollars or something and bro, he probably made like fifty thousand dollars off of that, bro. Like people, like oh, like you know, either he's fucking with us, and there really is something in this thing, or I just want to buy into it because I think it's funny. I'm willing to bet you there were a lot of people who jumped on that bid, not because they really wanted it or had the money for it, but because they just wanted to participate in the novelty aspect of it. You know what I'm saying? And that Man. drove enough attention around it that it eventually gets the attention of someone who might seriously consider it. You know what I'm saying? In, yep. in both cases. Like like I said, somebody on that Billie Jean thing was like, nah, I'll take nothing. You know what I'm saying? He got a hundred dollars in there. Just like somebody with apparently a hundred K in disposable income was like, you know what I mean? You know, it's, 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 a, it's a nice Monday night, you know what I'm saying? I ain't doing nothing. I'm on vacay. You know, you know buy these draws off lotto, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Man. We're gonna add this to my museum, my hip hop history museum. That, that's what they got it for, hip hop history. <laughs> Maybe T, I got it for the trap museum. It's Atlanta know. history, right there, bro. No tip. So I don't know. They they gonna they gonna flip that story in a different way. Oh man, okay, yeah, you're right. Ain't, ain't yeah, nobody coming. Ain't nobody yeah. coming for that. Yeah, you're right. That's true. That'd be ugly. That'd be a bad look. Hey, but look, maybe you could. <laughs> Buy it for a hundred k from yourself. Is that for myself? No, from yourself. Oh, from yourself. Let's okay. just say if yeah, you okay, were yeah. offering yeah. this, buy it for a hundred k from yourself, and then tell that story too. See, I don't know because you're cause... giving the money to yourself, and then at, at worst, what are you gonna pay? You know the yeah, like the eight ten percent. You know what I'm saying? Platform. That's what I'm saying. That's a. That's a ten, oh, I guess this is a ten thousand dollar marketing plan, marketing campaign. That's a good point. That's true. Hey, because that shit is on everything. I seen these academics posted. Yeah. Shade, Everything, bro. From yeah. the one post. Somebody bought that shit. That shit crazy. I really hope in your idea is true. I don't want to believe that somebody in the world did this. Like, I have too much faith in humanity. I I wouldn't want to believe that either, but we 
I think you got too much faith. <laughs> yeah, I think you got too much faith. We know somebody will buy that vest, bro. We know that stuff will buy that stuff. <laughs> There's some you somebody will buy it and feel like that means they can get a date with Lotto. If I was buying, I'm gonna be trying to flip it. How so? <laughs> I mean, I wasn't expecting to be put on the spot so soon <laughs> about it, but um, I would try to sell it to another bidder. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Two two hundred k plus, mm-hmm. or or exhibit it somewhere and sell admissions to exhibit, okay. or frame it, throw in the background of a YouTube video. Somebody gonna be scrolling by. Damn, who's this guy? Damn, I like the, the the draws from that lotto auction. Man, let me watch this and see what's going on, bro. Like something, that. bro. I'm putting it somewhere and flipping it. I like that one. <laughs> Treating that shit like a like a hundred k subscriber plaque, bro. Just hanging up in the background of every ad and video that I do. <laughs> hey, now we know who bought it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right, man. We out of here today, man. I'm Brandman Shot. I'm Corey. And we out. Peace. Peace.